and I have the the chance to to study with great teachers, which uh, some of them are here, like Maximo Prieto and Gabriela Arevalo. I don't know where are you, and um, and then I had the the chance to to work in the area of um, of molecular biology and uh, at the Institute of Veterinary Genetics here uh, near in La Plata. Um, and okay, I had the chance to to develop uh, some uh, a library for for doing bioinformatics in Faro. So what is uh, which? Okay, I call by small talk, uh, total lack of inspiration. But um, okay, it's a it's a Faro library to for processing bi biological data. It's a open source uh, with MIT uh, MIT license. Um, it's installable as any Faro package. And so the idea is, is to was to create a, an open source a, API to simplify the development of of uh, the small talk based based bioinformatics applications. Um, uh, of course, there are already a lot of of tools in this domain, which is uh, very complex, and, and there is a, a massive uh, amount of researchers and and practitioners doing uh, developing stuff, very cool stuff. So. Uh, but I think that I need to to make a, a some kind of introduction to to bioinformatics. So uh, we could say that bioinformatics is an interdisciplinary field, which uh, is concerned with the development of methods of recording and analyzing biological data, and and this has uh, um, a development in the, in the latest year of, through our ability to to read DNA first to understand, and in the latest year to manipulate DNA. So, uh, but one one thing that I would like to show is uh, the news about because what are the applications of bioinformatics for real? So, and um, I I've been like uh, scraping the news and and these are the news only the last the latest month. So um, this kind of we know that uh, only with a sample of the tissue or or body fluid uh, we we can. Uh, have a very precise precise information at the molecular level. So there are now technologies which allows to to grab a sample from just from air, and there are some environmental studies which can uh, identify uh, an individual just with the sample from the air. Um, uh, so there are new sequencing technologies, and there are some kind of uh, developments in the. In the I don't know if the, the image is, is too too small, but uh, in the center there are organoids which are uh, bits of of human tissues um, uh, and organs uh, organs that are uh, nurtured and cultivated in the in con, in nurtured in containers. Uh, so they are intended to you for replacement of of tissues or for regenerative medicine. And um, this uh, has a um, uses uh, developments from a lot of areas from cancer modeling, gene profiling, and drug uh, uh, drug research, uh, drug development research. Um, and another thing which is more popular is like, I, I don't know if any of you, do you know what this device is? No? Okay. This is a, this is a, a, a new chip sequencing technology which is uh, the first one, which is a portable real-time DNA sequencer. So you can buy it for less than $1,000. The reagents are a bit expensive, but uh, there there will be like, they are expected to be cheaper over time. So you can sequence yourself on, on, and get your sequencing data to your genome. So, but uh, the, the pattern here is that uh, since the, the the development of the Human Genome Project, which is uh, was uh, an international project for for decoding the human DNA, uh, and it, it cost uh, it has an initial cost of ten billion of dollars, and uh, it was the, we, we can see that in the x axis we have the the years uh, and the and the cost of of getting a genome. Uh, for an individual, and um, it was completed until recently on the hundred percent. It was uh, completed in the two thousand three for the ninety eight percent, and we can see that there is a, a drop in the two thousand eight, and uh, because uh, there was the the time when the laboratories the, the laboratories transitioned from 
uh, traditional sequencing technologies, sensors, which is called sensor sequencing to to next generation sequencing, which is another technology, uh, which is more more cheaper and more affordable for for laboratories, and and this has a, a lot of impacts in in medicine and uh, a lot of areas of of life sciences. So, uh, finally, we we could say that it's an uh, interdisciplinary fields on and there is a there is a, a, a thing which is working as a bioinformatician is not possible to work alone uh, you have always uh, collaborate you have always to collaborate with with our people for example uh, when a student diseases uh, diseases has a very complex structure and we have many subtypes and for example a student uh, leukemia or diabetes uh, they have many subtypes so which one do you want to study or which a control or a group do you which samples you you select as control or a control group so these are the questions that IBM informaticians doesn't have to to answer because they work with with uh, researchers which are in charge of experimental design so this is a collaboration is a big issue here um of course uh what what in the sense of the library what is provided so we have a sequence manipulation and pattern matching for for sequences, we will see what's what's about this. And we can query public databases uh, with the like, for example, the the one at the NCBI, which is a institute of for National Center of of Biotechnology in the United States. And we have we could parse the all the data formats, which are a lot in bioinformatics. And we have wrappers for for command line interface tools. And we have we could manipulate uh, sequence alignments and of oh, just a bit of architecture level uh, image uh, so we could see that there is a core of of modules where we have uh, objects for for biological uh, data uh, like uh, sequences and adapters and and then we have uh, more high level objects like uh, dealing with databases and population genetics on parsing for for the files and under the hood is using the, some libraries, some essential libraries in the Faro ecosystem, like Rosal for visualization, Polymath for for accessing matrices or um, or algorithms, and Petit Parser for for parsing the file formats. And a bit uh, of introduction to to some the biology behind behind uh, before seeing the, the the objects. So we have the the structure, the DNA structure is like. Um, uh, in this picture, I think that this picture is, is very nice because we could see that uh, each cell, uh, we have uh, eukaryotic organisms, of course. We have uh, uh, cells with a nucleus, and each nucleus in your in each of your cells has contains its own copy of the genome, and the genome is the, the, the collection of the all organisms, the DNA, and... And DNA is just a, it's like a chain which is uh, shaped in a spiral way with uh, two strands, and and they contain the the four uh, four molecules which uh, are ACGT, as you may know already, and and they are paired uh, in a complementary way. So so we we can see that uh, the A like always pair with the uh, with the T and the 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 sidonine with always pair with the G and um, and the, with the guanine and there is a, a mnemotechnic rule for this uh, which is used uh, in the you uh, in the University of Buenos Aires and, and other places which is uh, always uh, pair with I, I for Anibal Troilo and Carlos Gardel. So we, we we could use that. I I use the uh, for for other talks. I use uh, um, Alan Turing and Carl Gauss because it's like it took me some time to find Carl Gauss, but it's but I found it. So that's for the for the schematics of 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 the of the DNA structure and for the what is called the central dogma of of molecular biology is what uh, when a, a cell needs to do something. Um, the, it takes the the right piece of 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 the genome and transcribes it in, into RNA, um, and there is an additional t step in, in eukaryotic organisms to, to translate to to messenger RNA, and um, and then 
uh, uh, the RNA is translated into into amino acids, which uh, together they build for a protein. Um, so the basic idea is the DNA is used to make RNA, and the RNA is used to make the proteins. And sometimes there is some kind of patching from the protein to the to the to the DNA. Um, but uh, the central dogma is is just mostly one way. And behind this, if you, if you take notice that there is a the 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 RNA is read by three. Uh, in in unit of three, they are called codons, and there is a uh, genetic uh, dyed dictionary which is uh, used for this. There are the during translation, the, the the cells decode the messenger RNA by by reading the nucleotides in groups of three, and also they are called codons, and there are start codons. So the in the process. Uh, knows where to start to translate by reading these start codons and there is an, an end codon and the stop codon marks the, the end of a protein and uh, so in the in this sense we have a, a kind of, of challenge uh, for representing this in, in in objects because if you take notice the dna which is uh, for a nucleotide which is a is different from the rna a and different from the protein a so uh, for this, um, to to represent uh, sequences, uh, initially we could use a, a message like this. Just we have the strings of the four nucleotide letters, and we could just use a sequence, and we will get a, a bio sequence, an object, with, but with a, an alphabet, which is used to distinguish the type of sequence. And um, Okay, so we have the the sequence lengths and the the alphabets. I, I are already uh, there is a, an international uh, association uh, which uh, takes takes care of the normalization of the the alphabets letters, and uh, we use that. Um, so it's compliant with the IUPAC uh, alphabet, and. Uh, and the important part is is the result when when. Transcription starts. Uh, transcription is a process which uh, which uh, DNA is copied into RNA molecule, um, and so the the it begins with the RNA polymerase is is uh, is uh, binds to a promoter sequence uh, near the beginning of a gene, and and of course it translates to R RNA. Okay, I I'm showing with the with the mouse, but <laughs> it doesn't display it here. But um, so the, during this process, the the DNA of, of a sequence is copied into RNA, RNA and uh, we can of course uh, back transcribe into the RNA for into complementary DNA, for example, which uh, allows us to the more uh, alert prediction or analysis of DNA properties, and we could just just complement. Uh, with the two strands that we saw in the image, uh, each each of the nucleotides, and uh, we have, of course reverse complement because uh, strands are read in, in opposite directions, and we could of course uh, directly translate to proteins. Uh, like uh, we we see that there are only three because they are read by three, as the as I showed the the, the codon the uh, dictionary. And uh, we have some utilities, and um, of course, uh, counting residues in a, in a sequence. Like this is like for some kind of statistics in quality control of of sequences. Uh, we could see we could use the the GC content is a is another metric which uh, is used for determining the stability on the melting temperature for for example for for primer design applications, and. Um, we could also use plot this this metric. Uh, this this is a is a good metric for for quality control because under uh, equilibrium conditions like uh, where there is no selective pressure on or mutational pressure, the the frequency of nucleotides are equally distributed in the genome. So we could easily see what happens if there are a contamination from a reader from a sequencer. And there is another uh, metrics for for estimation of the the mass of the molecule, 
This is again used in PCR, in PCR primary design. Uh, PCR are, are, are short farmings that uh, are single stride DNA, which are designed to be complementary to the beginning of the sequence. There, these are uh, used to uh, in the for laboratory uh, personnel to to develop some uh, uh, to to amplify sequences, which are needed to to read uh, correctly DNA. And of course, uh, gel electrophoresis, which uh, uses electricity to to separate fragments of of DNA, and this is previous to a PCR or PCR uh, primer design. And we have uh, other other statistics for like uh, local composition of complexity, which uh, reveals uh, regions uh, with varying nucleotide composition. And uh, of course, that as nucleotides are not always uh, sequential, are, are not perfect machines, so. Um, so uh, there are uh, times where uh, nucleotides are ambiguous because uh, the sequencer couldn't read correctly the the base at at each position. So it's replaced but by uh, an ambiguous nucleotide, and it could translate to to multiple uh, to multiple uh, nucleotides. Um, and there are some sequencer utilities for related with sequence pattern matching. And with checksum algorithms, and of course we we could parse uh, phase day. Phase day is the one of the file formats which is very popular in bioinformatics. It contains just uh, the, the identifier and the the sequence, the DNA or protein sequence, and we could plot uh, read and write this this format and plot the sequence distribution diagram. And of course that one of the the stars of the of the area is the sequence alignment. And alignments are matrix representation uh, of uh, hypotheses about the evolutionary uh, history of uh, genetic material. And so the columns here are called like homologous. And of course, that we could construct uh, alignments by hand, but uh, the real analysis is, uh, is involves uh, a lot of data, like uh, uh, the human genome is about 3 billion of, of bases. It's about 700 uh, megabytes. Um, uh, so we could like use uh, an, an external aligner, like a Quarine, uh, remote Quarine uh, a service, which uh, performs this, uh, these algorithms. Um, this is so, so like, um, Google making a, a, like Google a DNA sequence. So this is a a, a, a method of querying a, a, a query sequences against a, a remote database of sequences. So you can see how how aligns how to how it arranges against uh, in comparison to uh, other sequences. And uh, this is a. a an algorithm to which is uh, high uh, intensive uh, in in resource and term because uh, it's, it uses dynamic programming uh, and these matrices uh, there are specialized matrices and these matrices uh, like it takes time to to process and, and space and uh, and of course we we could run uh, locally on a liner which is the through a rubber which there's multiple alignments uh, alignments uh, algorithms uh, and we could just uh, give us as input the a faster sequence uh, and get uh, the uh, the output and we can also visualize the sequence alignment um, from multiple sequences alignment files. Uh, so, go, so, go, so we could identify the sequence similarity between different genomes, and which are the sites with more, uh, where there are most variants. Um, and we have a, a local uh, aligner implemented in Faro. This is uh, the Needleman Watch. It's a global aligner uh, algorithm, and uh, it's, it's n nice to see. Uh, uh, if if you want to just to practice dynamic programming sometime, and it's, it's nice to see uh, the algorithms implemented in Smalltalk because uh, it allows to to really learn how how these algorithms work. And uh, just uh, as an example, uh, a complete like pipeline. Uh, this is pretty basic pipeline, of course. Uh, reading from from um, part of, reading from a, a query from a remote uh, service, which is interest and parsing the 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 result and then aligning 
to um, with some parameters and finally displaying the the alignment so uh, we could uh, access as, as shown the multiple databases there are more than 40 i think that the databases for example the uh, journals to query uh, information in, in scientific journals, OMIA or OMI for online Mendelian genetics, PubMed, which is very popular, and uh, gene expression, uh, everything that uh, genetics and molecular biology is, is so <laughs> is so big area. So there are a lot of things to do here. And as a summary, uh, we have uh, more algorithms. Uh, like uh, querying for consensus sequences, repeats, uh, some uh, artifacts uh, f uh, which are present in the in the genome, which are repeated sequences, and codon tables as I showed in the genetic dictionary, the UPAC alphabets, the features, uh, records. These are objects that um, that are inspired in the BioPython library, and. Um, so the idea is, is to have as much as functionality as possible from taking from the best from from multiple libraries, uh, which are, they are already really good. And we have wrappers. Most of them are related uh, to population genetics uh, because in the Institute of Veterinary Genetics we work uh, with uh, mostly the philo philogeography or population genomics. And for example, a structure for population stratification, shape it for facing, and other uh, order tools for working with the next generation sequence, which um, are are more uh, the current technologies used in the, in bioinformatics. And we have parsers and the queries for for um, on the, the the databases and the, the query objects for NCBA entries and and rebased. And um, okay, so that's uh, the website, uh, and uh, there is a Discord channel in the Faro, in the Faro Discord server, and there is the website which you can you can visit, and there are some uh, we have some publications uh, in bioinformatics journal, and we have a, a an analysis to a forensic analysis which helps to a prosecutor to. Uh, to to have a case for a for a criminal, and we have other more uh, advances for for uh, uh, analyzing inbreeding in 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 cattle population. Um, so that's it. Thank you. Hi, I know some people that works in bioinformatics, and I saw that they use very different tools all the time different languages, Python, R, uh, command line, Linux. And I, now I know that there is people working in another way, trying to organize things in, well, what moved, moved you to, to, to do that? I, um, yeah, I, I, I was there and I suffered. <laughs> A lot because uh, you know uh, most of the I think that most of the bioinformatics uh, development is not done by software uh, developers. Uh, that's that's a reality. So they use what they can, and and there is a and it's so fragmented. The if you, if you take a, a typical pipeline um, uh, for for researching about a disease, for example, medical bioinformatics or cancer bioinformatics, there are so many tools and they are always like uh, pressured, uh, like um, they are always uh, like forced, I don't want to say forced, but but they have to use the latest one. And if you have, if you need to, if you want to be in the, in the frontier of what you're doing, you need to like learn to co combine different tools. So they use uh, R libraries and Python and everything like ends up like a big mess because it's unmaintainable and they publish like uh, what they have uh, they it works in the in, in the moment um uh, that that's it because uh, like the speed of of development in for example in pharmaceutical research uh there are people i i i i i, I talk in a conference like one month ago with someone which the organoids which i hope they are sending to the space to, to with the bioprinters uh, they're sending to the space because the the laws of physics are better 
are, makes the process more affordable than printing here in the, in the earth. So they, they working with the kind of, of technology, so they are like a super fast and they need to combine everything. So what I, when I arrived to this, uh, to this area, I, I, I wanted to coming from, from small to and everything, uh, I wanted to, to have a, a more organized way and to learn the stuff like really, and using the, you know, that you cannot use a, a debugger in Python. It's like, <laughs> it's a, an incredible experience. And um, so this, this is what is, I have some time and I have the support from the Institute. And so that that's what the main reason. Yeah, I don't remember if you mentioned it, but uh, is somebody else using it or being used in some place? For now, uh, I know that the, there are people in the Institute using it. I, I talk with some people like they wrote to me directly because there are enough, enough users on and it's pretty hard to to make a, a community for because I really a small talk is a small community, so it's like a, a like a hard way to to get people into small talk and like convince that uh, there is. But I feel that uh, no, no, it's not about competition with other tools, but it's a really a really good way to learn because of all the facilities of of. of small talk and the specter and everything it makes really really easy to learn this kind of stuff the, the exploratory uh, analysis so do, do you think that for someone that is starting in bioinformatics and starting in programming your tool your approach could be better i yes i say I'm, I'm pretty sure of that after experimenting what uh, what was uh, from the other side like uh, bash scripts and an error and and combining with python and there are some uh, popular workflows uh, tools that makes i think that it makes it more difficult because when they work for example taverna or galaxy there are some popular workflow tools but when when you work like uh, the, your pipeline is like exactly the way that it is sold uh, with the the tool like everything works fine but at the point that you need to make something different like you need to like start to write xml and like uh, learn how to how to update the server and the, everything like it's, it's not an easy way to to work so yes for 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 starting is i think that is a really nice way to start um i have a question um have you thought about using gt toolkit for it because it looks like a good uh yeah i i i, I have an issue with the i try but um but the, the thing is it's like i have to like uh, constantly scroll <laughs> <laughs> and this is so uh, like sweeping of of of, uh, of scripting and everything is like I, I at some point I feel that it was easier to build some objects with the browser and just use the abstraction instead of I don't think that if it promotes really well to to the to build a model when, when using it but maybe it's me okay hi so you mentioned that something is like 700 megabyte Something sorry, I, I didn't hear something was seven hundred megabytes. Yes, yes. It's so the yes. For example, doing the complement or that kind of operation, where does that happen and what's the performance? Uh, usually uh, for for research, uh, the genomes are indexed and there are specific file formats to, to work with the indexed genome. And so it's not uh, really like nobody works with the raw genome. Uh, there are specialized file formats for that, and and there are consortiums <laughs> behind those file formats. So it's like a a, a big stuff behind. Uh, so, but yes, the the uh, the genome is seven hundred. The human genome, because uh, um, uh, organisms have different number of chromosomes, but the human genome is about seven hundred megabytes, and it's about three billions of letters. Uh, so yes, I I, I worked I I try and it follows just lost well and I have the, the, the chance to to it's not uh, right now to to visualize the the whole genome is a bit of uh, more complicated because of uh, Rosal is creating too many objects, 
but uh, I think that uh, I know that Milton, which is behind the Rosalt uh, library, is is fixing the the performance issues. So we have a. Uh, um, I think that uh, we we could use it for for loading the the raw genome. Also, is it more like uh, educational than than for for real research? So. Okay.